Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today I'm gonna to show you how to boot the computer off of the USB live key. So we have our live key here. Now I've switched this from the Fedora that we actually made to a Peppermint because I think that the processor in my particular computer we're gonna test with does not like the GNOME desktop. A few of the processors out there by Intel don't. So that's another reason why it's not a Fedora issue, it's a GNOME issue, the GNOME 3 specifically. So the Peppermint has XFCE, which is pretty much compatible with about everything. And so we're gonna use this. So our basic process here, I'm just going to show you the screen as we go ahead and do this. So we have our Windows 10 computer here, which I have to pull off of my wires. So I'm just using one of these simple micro PCs uh, for my Windows 10 uh, uh, compatibility testing in the office because there's no built-in cameras or microphones or anything like that and I just don't trust Microsoft that much. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to plug this guy into the internet. We're going to plug it into a monitor and I need the power of course. And then what we're going to do here is grab this guy here we're just going to find an available USB port and plug this into the USB port and then as I turn on the computer I'm going to um, hit the F12 key here repeatedly so we're going to go ahead and do that and then that's going to give us on our monitor instead of loading into Windows 10, we get a boot screen. Now, give me a second. I'm going to get this guy adjusted so I don't have to hold the camera there. So inside your boot menu, you have the options for USB storage device. That is the, the flash drive. Here I have an M2 SATA SSD. That is the internal drive. So you will either see SSD for a solid state drive or you will see an HDD for a hard disk drive. So whichever one you have in your computer, you're going to see that. You'll see a couple NICs in here. Those are all network, uh, network loadings. The Windows Boot Manager, if I do want to push it into Windows 10 here, I can do that. And then we also have this option here, which I think is another option for our, uh, our USB drive here. Uh, I've not tested that, uh, so I'm not going to boot off of that one yet. It, that may work. Uh, the other thing that I like in the boot menu here is you generally can get access to your BIOS setup, which you see here. Now, with this, um, not all computers have this, but almost all of them do. So rather than fight with figuring out is it the Escape, the F2, or F10 key, I usually, if I need BIOS, I just go right into the boot menu and go from, from there, unless the computer doesn't have one. So I'm going to hit the USB storage device. And then what's going to happen is it's going to boot off the USB drive. It goes right into our peppermint. And that one, you can't read it very well due to the lighting here, but that says try peppermint. We have the install, check disk for default, uh, for defects, test memory, or boot from the first hard disk. So we're going to hit the try peppermint OS live. And this is going to boot our computer right into peppermint. So I'll wait until the boot screen shows up here and I'll cut back in when we're loaded. Okay, so we are loading into Peppermint. So you can see here that we have the Peppermint menu down here. <clears throat> here we have access to everything. Since we are uh, did plug this guy into an internet connection, we should be able to get on the internet just fine. So running your computer off of a USB drive to test this out is actually a, um, in my way opinion, this is a better way to better way to test out a distro for your own personal use than running through the virtual box because it will operate a lot smoother because we're not sharing the system resources between the operating system uh, that, that hosts it and the, the operating system that's the guest. So here we, you can see you have access to this. I, I really like the Peppermint desktop, some of the things they've done with it, very nice transparency layers. Um, so here's uh, just a good way to get into, into the system and try this out. <clears throat> now, of course, the disadvantage uh, of try, trying this off of these live keys is uh, you can't save any of your work or any of your data, uh, at least not without installing the system to a flash drive. And I'll show you how you can do that. And many Linux systems can be installed onto a flash drive. 
So we're going to close that out. I'm going to shut the computer down. <clears throat> and then we're going to get into the BIOS. I'm going to show you a little bit about the BIOS. Uh, I'm not going to bother cutting out because Peppermint's really fast. So it's already off. <clears throat> so now I'm going to turn the computer on. I'm going to spam that F12 key again. And then we're going to go down. Oh, I'm going to let that focus there first. Oh, come on, focus. There you go. Okay, we're going to come down into BIOS. So as I said, uh, most BIOSes are, are pretty similar. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of differences here and there. But for the most part, they're going to have a lot of your same information. Um, you know, the advanced will have things like virtualization to enable uh, virtual drives, uh, integrated NICs, you know, just all this kind of stuff. What we're most concerned with is under the boot option here. So you will either have this UEFI guy listed here, or you won't have that listed at all, in which case everything's going to be legacy. In this case here, I can toggle between the legacy and the UEFI, and this is kind of as, as your default. Some systems will allow you to put in a legacy and then a, a UEFI. This one doesn't, which is a little problematic because if you do have a system that can take both, if you run it to run the legacy checking for USB first and then go into the UEFI and then boot from there second, you can actually run your computer with any Linux distro on a USB port just by plugging it into the drive, turning the computer on without going into the boot mode. Now, my main, my main Linux production computer does not have that option, unfortunately. So if I want to boot off of a key, I have to go into the boot menu. My main desktop computer has that option. And so that's very nice because when I want to boot into Ubuntu, I plug it into the back of the computer, push the power button, and it goes right into Ubuntu. If I want to boot it into Windows, I pull the USB drive out, boot it up, and it goes right into Windows. So this does not have that, that option. But in here, um, this is how you turn off your secure boot. If it's disabled, you can turn it on, on or off here. So when you disable your secure boot, it's going to give you this warning message. It says, attention, changing this setting may prevent your operating system from booting. This is just kind of a warning key. It, honestly, I've never seen any problem with turning this off. And this is the first thing I do with any computer. What secure boot does is it prevents another operating system from booting onto your computer, which is problematic if you are trying to test out Linux distros. So if you go to boot into your computer and you do not see the option to boot off of a USB port, that means that secure boot is enabled. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Now over here under your boot options, you can see that you can set the Windows boot managers first. You can set the, uh, the network drivers to boot. What we can't do is we cannot set up in the UEFI mode. We can't set this up to go into a USB drive. Now, if I change my boot list option to legacy, now I have the ability to do that. So if I set this up under legacy, first it's gonna check for USB storage device, then it's gonna check the, the uh, solid state drives, then internal hard drives, because this box actually does have the capability of having a hard drive and an SSD. Uh, then we go to a CD drive, the port and then a diskette drive if you could ever possibly hook one up to this. Now, unfortunately, I checked this and, and this particular SSD does not have a legacy option to boot into Windows 10. So this does, is not a viable option for booting the system into Windows 10 and into a USB. So I pretty much am just going to keep this on UEFI so that it always boots right into Windows. And then if I want it to boot into Linux, I just have to hit that F12 key, get into my, my boot manager. Now we're going to enable secure boot at this point in time. And I'm going to hit the F10 key, which is the universal save and reset. So what we're going to do is I'm going to boot into my boot menu again, and you're going to see that the option to load into that is not there. Now here it showed up again. I'm pretty sure if I hit this, it will not let us load, but we're going to give it a try actually, because some distros as you burn it onto a disc, will allow both options. Let's see, oh, try without installing. Let's give that a try. Let's see what that does. 
I thought that since Secure Boot was turned on, it may not let me do this. However, if Peppermint is a Secure Boot operating system, which it very well might be, it will still work. Okay, I was kind of proved wrong on that. Many distros will not let you boot into that if Secure Boot is turned on. This one apparently does. So maybe go ahead and try it with Secure Boot mode turned on. So here it looks like it booted just fine. Huh, that was actually a surprise to me. I did not think it would do that. Um, many Linux distros will not allow you to automatically boot right into there if Secure Boot mode is turned on. But anyway, if, it, if you're not able to get into there, the first thing you try, get into that BIOS, disable Secure Boot, and you should be set to go. So this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to